So we started on finite elements last lecture, and uh, uh, the example we are looking at is Poisson's equation. So Poisson's equation starts with, uh, let's first uh, uh, discuss it in one dimension, one spatial dimension, so it's an ODE, but we'll use partial differential notations uh, just to, just because we um, will generalize to two dimensions. So this second derivative of u plus f is equal to zero. That's our Poisson's equation. Okay, so what we do in finite elements is to first look for a space x x let me denote it as xh where h stands for the discretization so if you have a different h that means you have a different grid or mesh sites and this space is defined as uh, uh, the example we took at the last lecture is all the space of f f being a function, right, uh, from uh, omega to real. Omega is our domain. Such that f is continuous and piecewise linear. All right, so, so these are the functions that they are piecewise linear, which means they are straight line in each element, in each interval. Okay, and then we have a basis for this a, for this xh, right? So the basis uh, basis is we call the, the g g i g i actually is in this space x, right? Such that g i of x i is equal to one, and g i of x j for any other j is equal to zero. So these are the kind of functions that we call a nodal basis. So for example, this is x, this is gi. And uh, let's say this is xi, this is xi minus one, this is xi plus one. gi would be zero over here, goes up to one at xi and back to zero. Right? So this is a basis of this linear function space. Which means any function in this xh, I can represent it exactly as a certain linear combination of these bases gi's. And this linear combination is unique also because of gi as a set, it's a basis. Right? If it's not unique, then you can mathematically show that the gi's cannot be linearly independent. You can actually represent one of the gi's with the linear combination of the other gi's, which is um, which cannot be true by the definition of the basis. All right, so once you do that, what we do in finite element is that I'm going to approximate. So this is uh, up to right now, it's all exact. And now I want to do some approximations. I want to say my u is actually a linear combination of, let me just say ui times gi. So i goes from 1 to n, this is the number of bases that is going to span the linear space. I'm also going to say that the inner product of gj for any j with the residual of this differential equation has to be equal to 0 for j equal to 1 to n. Right? So this is saying that I'm going to approximate, I'm going to restrict the space in which I want to find the solution instead of from any functions to a function in this space xh. So I'm looking for an approximate solution in a subspace. And then I cannot really expect my residual, this equation, to be satisfied exactly. So I also want the projection of the residual into this smaller space to be zero. So this is what finite element is doing in the most uh, simplest sense. Okay, and then what I'm going to uh, do is I'm going to substitute this representation of u into this equation. So I'm going to have a, a summation of ui gi plus f is equal to zero, and which gives me two terms. One is the summation of ui Oh, so this is actually uh, the second derivative. 
And the first term is UI can be pulled out of the derivative and pulled out of this inner product. So the first I get is GJ in a product with the derivative of GI. The second term is going to be in a product with GJ with F is going to be zero. And this gives me a linear matrix equation A times U1, etc. UN is equal to B, where B is from this, A is from this. All right, so this is uh, where we got in the last lecture. Any questions on that? Yes? It's like, uh, it's like is that function is what's the variable? Which function? The, the base. The base. Right, the basis, you are asking exactly the right point. So the basis function actually is not differentiable yeah. the second time. Right, so what you get over here, the second derivative is going to be a collection of three delta functions. Okay. Right, you get, so the derivative of the second derivative of gi is going to be a delta function point uh, upwards, right, and uh, one downwards and upwards. So this is at xi minus one, at xi, xi plus one. Of course, this is not ideal. And what we'll be talking about next is, is there a way to formulate exactly the same matrix equation without getting involved into delta functions?